are underway in the south end, that big tan building with the red roof. That is the Fort William Henry Hotel. It's been a Fort William Henry Hotel there since 1855. Now as we go, Lake George is a pure, clean body of water. We wish to keep it that way, so please, no food items, no popcorn candy, no scraps, anything. Nothing could go in the lake, folks. Believe it or not, those food items can be toxic to fish and fowl. It is littering, and in the Adirondack Park, which you're in, it carries a very hefty fine. In the southern basin of Lake George. Lake George is basically two basins, northern basin and southern basin. They're about the same size and they are connected by a strip called the Narrows. And it goes through with a series of falls and rapids called the Lushum. Falls a vertical distance over 120 feet. And some of the battles from the 1700s that took place there. Great place for families. They have walking paths. All go to a different monument or statue to such figures as Father Isaac Jones, the French Jesuit missionary, the first European to see Lake George. That's Million Dollar Beach, built in the early 1960s when New York State wanted to create a swimming spot. So they brought in over a million dollars of sand. And just orient yourself again, we Lake George is primarily north and south, which is primarily residential, single family homes. For a lot of commercial businesses, just a couple. Paul's Marina is down there in the corner. That's been there. They do a lot of work on old Packers and Chris Craft. But most of these are private homes. Some year round. But some are still three season. We're only here for the spring and summer. And fall. temperature is about oh, 5 to 15 seconds. Yeah, you jump in, you're in for about 5 to 15 seconds before you're out. It's still pretty cold, folks. It's Memorial Day. Water temperature may be in the 40s, 50s, depending on where you are. And during the latter part of the summer, we'll get up into the center of Wea Waka. You look through the trees, you see some of the beautiful original structures to the compound. Mary Wizzy Fuller fulfilled her dream, creating a very safe and very reasonably priced vacation spot for the working women, primarily out of Troy and Cohoes, New York, who worked in the textile factories of the day. Her dream continues. It is now a nonprofit. We walk exclusively caters to women. In July and August, it is exclusively for women's only. No men, period, and of sentence. And we've got some friends out on the dock. We're going to say hello on our whistle. That's their new addition this year. They got a horn. Well, I mentioned Katrina Trask. She was quite the art aficionado. And if you look along the shore, you'll see the brown building in the corner. And then follow the shoreline, you'll see a blue 
marker. That's a historic New York State historical marker. And what they're talking about is in 1908, a young aspiring 18-year-old girl won a scholarship to the Partisan Residence Program. She actually stayed in that chalet-style building in the back. That young woman, Georgia O'Keeffe. continue north we see some beautiful homes along the shoreline but if you look beyond the shore look up the mountain that's French Mountain and French Mountain is the backdrop for James Fenimore Cooper's depiction of Last of the Mohegans and seen the book or read the book or seen the movie you seen the stories or read the stories about characters such as Ginger Cook and Uncas and Hawkeye and Mogwai. The Marquis de Montcalm and his nemesis, the British General Monroe. Again, all in less than a year. fresh body of water it retains that quality because the waters that come into Lake George are through underground springs that come in the bottom of the lake all that precipitation on the mountains around or it comes in through waterfalls or brooks if you look off to our right you see the green bow house look just to the left or north and there's one of the brooks bringing that mountain water into the lake And to the left of the waterfall, a beautiful point of land, which holds a national landmark, one of our historic landmarks. And there she is in this afternoon sun, our Statue of Liberty out there at the point. And right next to her are another national icon, our flag. And it's at this point in the cruise, we like to offer a sincere thank you and salute to our veterans, our military, past, present, and future. Also all the EMS, the doctors, the nurses, the police, the fire, the EMS, all work to keep us safe and offer us the freedoms to be out here on this lake on this day, enjoying this beautiful Memorial Day weekend. So from a vet to our vets and our military, a sincere thank you and salute.
and puffing you here that is the mini doing her job you see the mini is one of the few remaining true steam driven paddle wheel steamships we take the water in put it in a boiler take number two diesel fuel turn that water into steam it's that steam that's piped back to the engine room where it works two horizontally mounted reciprocating engines and it's those engines that turn that big 12 foot red paddle wheel in the back yep and we are truly only under steam power with the paddle wheel that's all that drives the mini had that name for 1645 with father isaac jones the first european to see lake george a french jesuit missionary when he laid eyes on it, so enamored, he blessed it. Lac du Saint Sacrament, Lake of the Blessed Sacrament. out of primarily New York City and they've been coming here for over a hundred years. Judge O'Connor gave them this property when his wife didn't like it. She didn't like to come up to the lake so he gave it to the to the Paulus fathers. At that time they built that house, house to the left that is original to the property. That's where the original Paulus stayed and if you look in the middle you'll see the steep architecture that was their original chapel. Well, no longer. That building is strictly for the fully ordained. The building to the right is now the dormitory for the student seminarians who come up in July and August. We get about 100 of them in the season. And if you look between the two, that is the building now that is their dining facility. Father Frank, that's his office right in the front. He's been here over 30 years, but behind it is a communal dining hall. And you can't see it, but to the left, they did build their own chapel up there. Beautiful, beautiful chapel. Unique, you see the trees, they literally grow out of the rocks. Now, Lake George is a glacier lake. When the glacier receded, it did cut large swaths right through the rock. Right off those ledges, 100 feet straight down. And I mean straight. Side, that is the gray, that is Tumble Brook. Show magazines, better homes and gardens. Not only for their architecture, but the grounds, but primarily because the bump houses were built to mimic or match the homes in which they reside. If you look at the gray house, follow the shoreline, you see the little stone bridge? That's actually Tumblebrook. one coming up you see some construction equipment folks this house has been under we call this the forever home that's somebody's forever home it's been about three four years that thing has been under construction now so it is taking forever to build
left hand side or port side. You see, we've started to turn to the left, or we're going to soon be heading west. And as we come out more towards the middle, you can see the east shore does fall back. That goes into Dunn's Bay. So from that point of land there, it goes back about another mile, mile and a half, into Dunham's Bay. Anybody over there? That's the Dunham's Bay Lodge at the south end of that bay. And what you would think is the East Shore is actually a peninsula, that's Assembly Point. We were not that peninsula at one time was privately owned and was a private hunting reserve. That was at the turn of the century. But no longer, that is strictly residential today. If we go back to Assembly Point, that gap there, that is a channel. Our sister ship, the Mohegan, she actually goes through there. That island to the left, that's Speaker Heck. That is a strictly a camping island, day use only. This island here to the right, that is Diamond Island, the one closest to us. Again, that is a day use picnic island only. Diamond Island during the French and Indian War was actually a garrison for the British. They housed men and munition there as part of their logistical train to support their efforts against the French. But the West Shore at the turn of the century did get a nickname. Built by another Peabody brother. That was his private residence and is still a private residence today. That estate was originally owned by Adolph Ox, the original publisher of the New York Times, that was his. Unfortunately, most of his original houses and state has burned down and been replaced but original to the property is the boathouse that you see here along the lake has the flag out there so they turned it into a destination for a lot of weddings corporate events so that's their banquet hall some upscale accommodations and pretty much every weekend during the summer there is a wedding right out on that rock point over there just to off our stern. Mr. Woods is a local name. He was a local businessman, started a rather modest amusement park just south of Lake George. On five acres of land, he had four employees. Started in the early 1960s, called Storytown. Storytown, USA. Well, what we knew as kids of Storytown, today is Six Flags Greatest Game. Mr. Woods also had Gaslight Village, if anybody remembers that. That used to be right in the middle of the village, no longer. It's now Charles R. Wood Park. And they had a lot of activities there. And that was built for a... a Reverend Paxton. Reverend Paxton out of Lake George Village, or Caldwell at the time, where he had his church. And he called that home of a porches. purposely scuttled. They'd lash five or six together, sink them in order to keep them protected from the winter snows or the enemy destroying them. It was seven-sided and had sides that came up over to protect the people inside from artillery and cannon fire. 57, but it got away from them. They tried to do it over near Paula's Fathers and off to our left. It had finally sunk in about 110 feet of water. 
But if you look south, you'll see the Fort William Henry Hotel, the tan house. We're coming up on an island called Key Island. This is a privately owned island. We have a Sea Ray boat and a bunch of people on their dock. So what you're watching is them towing their dock out of the little cove. They're going to bring it around the other side or the west side of the island and set their dock up for the year. So, folks, you don't see that every day, the launching of the dock. Folks, that's Tea Island. What you're looking at is a private island. Beautiful little cove there, and that's where they protect the dock and their, their boat during the winter. Good luck, guys. At the turn of the century, Tea Island was used as a tea house. The north end, they did have a tea house. People would row out and have afternoon tea. One of the notable figures that came to Tea Island, of course, was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And the rest has the red chimney up there. Mission has that when steamboats come back into port, they play their calliope. That is our big steam pipe organ up here on the third deck. If noise bother you, you may want to find your spot towards the back. I'll give you a minute to move, and then we'll play our calliope. Please find a seat, sit down. I need everybody sitting for the duration of the docking procedure. 
I can have nobody walking about the deck, nor can I have anybody on the stairs. So please, not on the stairs. Please keep all hands, feet, arms, legs, toes, everything inside the rails. There's going to be a temptation to reach out for those wooden pilings. Please, please resist the temptation, folks. Those pilings do not move. And regardless, I don't have a set of tweezers big enough to get that splitter out. So, keep everything inside the rails. Folks, remain seated till the boat comes to a final stop. I'll come back on, let you know what's safe to depart. Sometimes we do land with a bump. No harm it is. And again, we do have to give that navigational whistle. So here comes the one long, loud blast. 